Before we get into the details of quantum mechanics, it's best to review some uh, concepts of classical mechanics. That's because when people developed quantum mechanics in the 1920s, they relied on uh, classical mechanics to do that. And when we develop quantum mechanics, there are certain things that uh, we need to know about classical mechanics. So let's uh, just very, very briefly review some concepts we need to know about classical mechanics. Whole courses in physics are devoted by, to mechanics, so in this very short 10 minutes we're not going to be able to derive a lot of things. But uh, classical mechanics, any uh, textbook, intro, chemistry, or intro physics textbook would have more details. All right, so what is uh, classical mechanics? Classical mechanics, you're trying to describe the forces, the statics, and dynamics of particle motion. What does that mean? Well, we'll get that in a minute, but for quantum mechanics, it's mostly dynamics of particle motion. For example, we'll have an electron moving around a proton in a hydrogen atom, and we want to describe the dynamics of that particle motion. Uh, statics is useful. Um, if, for example, if you're an engineer and are designing a building and you want to look at the forces uh, operating on the, that various on the building, various girders and so on, so that the building doesn't fall down in an earthquake. But we'll be focusing mostly here on dynamics of particle motion. All right, so what does that mean? Well, suppose you have a particle here and we know the initial position, so the position at so, uh, some time equals zero. That will be some position and we're just going to make this move in one dimension and let's look at the velocity at time equals zero and that will be um, some velocity v zero. So if we know the in initial time, uh, the position at initial time and the velocity at initial time by Newton's uh, I think third law, no first law, uh, a body in motion remains in motion unless it, uh, it acts um, upon in uh, some external force, we'll just say, all right, so the velocity is going this way, the position is actually there, so we can have, uh, we can describe where this particle will be at some time in the future. So the goal of the uh, dynamic part of classical mechanics is to get an equation, equation of motion, how position varies with time. So if we just have, uh, um, um, oh, it sort of makes sense, we just had a particle moving around, no external forces, uh, Newton's first law says, yeah, okay, we can do that. But now what happens if you have some sort of force, say, acting here? So initially the particle here is moving with this velocity, now you have a force going there. Well, uh, that's where Newton's second law comes in. Force is equal to mass times acceleration, which is the second derivative of position with respect to time. So this is a second order differential equation. You could solve this to get x as a function of time, some function here, and therefore you have the equation of motion. So we, using Newton's second law, we can get the equation of motion for this particle when you have external forces acting on it. All right, so that's Newton's uh, Newton uh, formulation of uh, dynamics of particle motion. Now, uh, late 1700s and the middle of 1800s, uh, two mathematicians by the name of Lagrange and Hamilton formulated Newton's second law and got an equation of motion uh, in order to and to solve that, you get well, the equation of motion, uh, which uh, b becomes useful. So you get the Hamiltonian from the Lagrangian formulation of classical mechanics. The big thing here is that you introduce what is known as generalized coordinates, and for the Hamiltonian, the generalized coordinates are momentum p and q which um, is related to position. But it's not necessarily just position x as in the Newton. Uh, in fact, if you have various coordinate systems, what you want is to have something that's invariant with a coordinate system and energy is, and therefore you introduce a momentum and a, a generalized position so you can have that uh, criterion being held. And the key thing about the Hamilton Hamiltonian um, or the Hamilton formulation, H is uh, equal to the kinetic energy of the particle, so this particle is moving, has some kinetic energy, plus the potential energy. 
So the potential energy recalled is the energy due to position. And so there might be, for instance, this might be a positive charge, this might be a, a fixed negative charge, and therefore uh, you would have a force acting on this, a Coulomb force, which would depend upon the distance between the two uh, things here. So that's potential energy. And so the Hamilton, or the Hamiltonian, this is called a Hamiltonian, is just the sum of the kinetic energy plus potential energy. And if you have a particle, those are the only two kinds of energy you would have. So this is then the total energy. So in our formulation of quantum mechanics, a lot of it is just taking the Hamiltonian, which we express in um, classical mechanics, and transforming that into the Hamiltonian in quantum mechanics. And we'll see how to do that in just a minute. All right, so there's a very, very brief review of classical mechanics. Focus here on Hamiltonian, which is the sum of kinetic plus potential energy.